Hello and welcome to a brand new experience here on TV3. This is GPL Express, your definitive guide to the week's biggest conversation on the Ghana Premier League. Every week I take you to the very deep depths of um, football brewed from the finest Ghanaian ports. My name is Juliet Bewa and I'm glad to have your attention for the next 30 minutes and coming up we have the highlight of some key games for you. We'll also bring you expert views and analysis um, as well as some interviews and the day's biggest backstories and more. Your contribution um, do matter as well. Um, send us your comments using the hashtag GPL Express on Twitter and you can also send us your video reactions or maybe like a comment on WhatsApp number 020-2166633 and we will play your video live on the, um, this show and also your comments as well. But in the studio with me to um, talk through the match day four of the Ghana Premier League and the clubs indeed gave us a lot of midweek action um, today and I have um, call um, Saki with me here in the studio call. Thank you very much for joining me here. The pleasure is mine. Ah, it's been a while. Yeah. Match day four, any surprises? Well, we expected more goals because that's the trend that we are seeing from a rejuvenated um, Ghana Premier League. Uh, I wasn't surprised with some of the score lines, but I'm excited that uh, much of some enthusiasm has been built. Thanks to some results like um, Kotoko coming down and, you know, Midiema, Idiana. very yeah, strong now. As well. Back to back yeah. um, defeat, yeah. <laughs> yes, and you know, this Premier League actually has had a mixture of everything you might want, apart from that unfortunate incident in Kumasi the last time around. But um, I believe that we are in for something tasty. Right, we're in for something tasty. We'll be taking a look at the um, match day four result. Um, if we have that ready, match day um, four results. And it was interesting um, things coming out. Um, like you said, Midiama um, getting the best of um, Kumasi Asante Kotoko there. Um, so if you have the match day four results, let's take a look at it. Um, it's been um, a busy day for all the 16 teams in the Ghana Premier League as they um, cross match day four of their bucket list. And all games um, have ended um, with the Legon Cities and also Ashgold won um, the last two wrap up um, a while ago. And we go on the screen to check out um, the results and you, you can see Mediama went top of the league after that is Ashgold um, going top of the league because they've not um, conceded um, any goal there um, and you can also see the Kotoko suffering their two defeats in, in, in a week mm -hmm. and Kim Faisal as well. Um, talk us through some of them. Yes, um it looks like uh, 11 Wonders have also bounced back and the Diana Stars at long last have had to relinquish some of that superiority they showed all through. And Liberty were able to go as far away as Cape Coast to get that win over there. So it was quite interesting. Um, Akra Hearts of Folk were also able to you know, bury that disgrace where they always suffered at the hands of Wafa. And it's actually their first point you know, far away in Wafa in about five years and it, it tells that Accra folk are seeing let's see some resurgence if you want to call it but media my hey they are my pick for match week four and um let's see what happens afterward and also Brecon chelsea moved into um the the, the, the league they're also doing quite well yeah. giant slayers as well um ensuring that hearts of Oak and kumasi asante kotko will not enjoy <laughs> the first few um, games in match week four. They have been able to dispatch Hearts and Kotoko as if, you know, they are not competitors. And remember, they did it at the home grounds of these stalwarts. Yeah, and um, you, they also came um, in a cry here. But one game that I want us to talk about, that is 11 um, Wonders and also Adriana Stars picking a vital win. This is their first win in the, um, in the season. Exactly. And it was, you know, very important that they got off running, especially when they faced Adriana at home. Adriana, we knew, were steamrolling any team that came across and uh, were banging in the goals. They, they have some of the um, great goal scorers in this tournament. So it was a good result for them and they kept a clean sheet as well. Right, so we'll be moving to the Mediama um, and also Kumasi 
Asante Kotoko match. And as um, we, we told you earlier, um, from um, the temporary home match ban and charged on four counts of misconduct in respect um, of the match day. Um, three against Ambrekum Chelsea, Kumasi Asante Kotoko traveled to the Akon Park to battle it out with a medium sporting club, but met a second straight defeat. Our reporter, Alfred Techi Ahin, was at Takwa. It's very difficult. Sometimes you get frustrated and everything. Yeah, Be, being a coach is a great achievement for me to beat all the big clubs in your home grounds. Because Kotoko has a team. They have a good team. They have a good coach. I do respect the coach a lot. With their backroom staff, they have what it takes to be. So, as winning this match, it's a marvelous. Two losses in a row. Not a good result for us, but I also continue to count our losses. Go back to the cricket drawing board, correct our mistakes, and come back bigger against Ebisu and Dwarfs. We are still more than two goals, but just a failure, we have one goal. Go to Paris to Colisia. This, this place, I come back, is the place back of death. Anybody, anybody who is want to hear, you lose. We prepare to score to at least two goals, but just a failure that we score only one goal. The finish is so high. We are expecting more goals. By God grace, we get one goal. We, we thank God that we win today. Let's have the medium team. Hey, boy, oh, hey, hey. Gala ref, oh, gala ref, is, gala ref, is, oh. Hey, some money, I can't public in here. Hey, some money, I can't. Now, me can't pack where you sell. So, go talk to your Lucy Martin. I did my media ma. Me a palace. Me support you. Go talk to me. Now, me friend radio station for two years. Me can football set. And then now we have me just this year. Me drew few. Me drew few. Me have go talk to me. And then go talk to Saki. Me think I'm going to be. Me do not even pay for you now, ma. Right, so interesting sound bites from the fans there. But still staying at the Akon Park and sports journalist um, Colin Sata Poku um, was at the game and we go live to him now in Takwa. Um, Collins, thank you so much for joining me here on GPL Experts. And two defeats in two straight games for Kumasi Asante Kotoko. What does this, um, or what does it come down to? Well, it comes down to lack of Preparation on the part of Asante Kotoko. I know it is a strange take from me, but the reality here is that Kotoko brought in Maxwell Knudu to try and change things, and the preparation time afforded him wasn't enough. So you could see after Asante Kotoko went behind, they tried getting back into the game, and as soon as they couldn't do that, they resorted to frustration. And it is what culminated in the sending off of Ibrahim Moro. So clearly you could see that after some time, when Kotoko are able to get what they are looking for, they begin to struggle. It happened against Brickham Chelsea. When they went behind early, they tried getting back into the game. It didn't happen, and then their frustration showed up again. Unfortunately for them, the fixture list put them up against a side that is very well drilled and ready for this year's league. Even though they are playing away from the TNA Park and are now playing at the Akun Park, it doesn't show much. And look at Asante Kodoko and Mediama. For three match days, Mediama have named the same 18, and you couldn't say same for Kumasi Asante Kodoko. A very well drilled side today ensured that Asante Kodoko were going to be in trouble. And it's a game that the result has flattered Asante Kodoko a bit. Yes, okay. they had their moment coming off the goalpost from Sonia Akuba. But Mediama dominated this game and could have run away with a 2 0 or a 3 0 victory. Collins, if you can um, make your camera a bit stable for us. Um, finally, just a brief one. How do you think the team will come out of this quickly? It's a very difficult situation they find themselves in. The soul of the club largely is the supporters, Juliet. And for them to be playing their next five games at the Babaya Stadium behind closed doors is going to affect them. Okay. As if that is not enough, there is some seeming level of frustration amongst the fans. They just can't see and understand why Maxwell Kunedu, someone who knows the club very well, is in. They have a promising start to the season, and it looks like everything is disintegrating for them. So it appears they've started asking questions, and it was evident here. 
Why? Why is this happening that they are losing back to back like this? Okay, Collins, thank you very much for your time, Collins. My colleague, um, sports journalist, they're joining us live from um, Takwa. He watched the Media Makumasi Asante Kotoko match and we'll be following in Kini on that. We take a breather. We'll be back with more here on GPL Express. Stay with us. So you're welcome back to GPL Express here on TV3. And uh, we go straight to Sogat Kope, um, where Accra had to walk. And Wafa went at each other for that much-needed three points. But it was not to be. They had to settle for um, point each. But it will be good for Accra had to walk. And Thierry Nyan was at the game for TV3 and um, took the reaction from the coaches. Right, I think it was a good game. Um, our tactical approach to the game actually worked. Um, we created a lot of chances. We had better possession. We were just unlucky to score. So we did well. They were defensively oriented in the game. Uh, they came with a tactical ploy not to concede. So if you could see, they weren't opening up. They were always closing up. So it was a tactical approach that they brought. I know Wafa, not from now. I know Wafa, when did they were at? Uh, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, I know them. So we came with a real plan that we will start by high, high pressing. When we don't get what we need, we will do medium, medium pressing. And I think that, that, that was what my boys do. Wherever they push the ball, we just close them down and then that's all. It's a very good resource. We came to win. We didn't come here to draw. But God has given us draw. So we just take, take it like that and then build upon it for our next matches. Clearly, the plan worked for Accra Hats of Oak, but we will um, crunch a few numbers now, starting with how the teams are standing after match day four. And I'm um, called, interestingly, you can see that um, Ashanti Gold, they, they're maintaining the top spot. Exactly. Well, without uh, conceding any goal and um, sharing top spot with Midiema as well, who have also been quite impressive in these first four games. Rekum Chelsea after their giant slaying feats against Accra Hearts of Oak, and Kumasi Asante Kotko, of course, in their background, are sitting pretty at third, and Adriana Stas, who okay. just fell at fourth. Now, let's look at the bottom half of the table. And um, inter interestingly, you know, the, the teams are still, it's still early days yep. yet um, in the Premier League, but... Clearly, um, you see that teams are not getting the point. But this season has witnessed some um, early goal poachers who are keen on registering their names on the score sheet. And Eddie Anastasis, um, Yahya Mohamed, has taken the lead so far. And um, on the screens now is um, the top five roll call for the top scorers. And um, you, you know that call. He, he's a serial um, player poacher, in the yeah. Premier League. Yes, he's a poacher and um, you expect him to lead the Adriana side. Actually, his goals are what are keeping Adriana sitting where they are right now and his experience will definitely tell. Opokwa Jiman as well has yeah. been quite impressive. In the fourth minute, he was called upon to convert that penalty kick against Kumasi Asante Kotko and despite the pressure, he, he really came to the party and that's quite impressive. We are seeing a couple of players, Edu Kwabna, Zakari and then Babil, the youngster, Nana Kofi Babil, also registering some goals. Uh, important uh, for some positive stuff for the league and I hope many more goals will be registered. Right, interesting. But from next week or this weekend, we'll be seeing some familiar faces. And as you can see on your screens, um, it, it has quite seen the returnees to the local um, league in the this time. And after a long term surgeon, one is making a grand comeback. Jordan Opoku is set to sign for Brickham Chelsea, or he has signed, and he'll be playing next week, or he's joining the team next week to start training. And you can see his timeline um, of clubs um, on, on your screens quickly, Cole. Exactly, and um, it looks like this would be a comeback or a return to Brickham Chelsea, where you saw that in 2012-2013, that breakthrough season for him, he was at the top. And he's coming back. I think it's positive. He has a lot to add to this Brickham Chelsea team.
Right, so just as we are talking about the man, Jordan Opoku, Jordan joins us now to talk through his return. Um, Jordan, thanks so much for joining me here on um, JPL Express. Um, hello. Thank you so much for joining me here, Jordan. Yeah, hello. I'm on the line. Jordan, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. First of all, I want to ask you, what informed your decision to stage a comeback um, in the Ghana Premier League? Uh, I think uh, I have uh, so many uh, things ahead of me, so I have to get a team to start training with them and also to get my ship back. That's why I, I decided to go and sign the coaches. Why Berkham Chelsea? Is it because you've played for them before? That is why you decided to come back there? It was easier for you to come back? Yeah, I spoke, to, I spoke with the chairman two days ago. Uh, so I decided to sign on Monday, uh, last day of the registration. Just before the deadline. Interesting. But next week you are starting training with Berkham Chelsea. And they are, they are doing well so far in the league. What are the targets that you've set for yourself? Um, I have a target with me, not because of uh, Ghana League only, but also to move uh, outside. So I need to get a team to train with them so that I can get my feet. Right, Jordan, thank you very much for joining me here on um, GPL Express and... Cole Jordan, he has seen it all. Um, he's done it locally, and um, I think it will add something to the maybe for for um, Brooklyn Chelsea. Exactly, and um, for Jordan, he has two main benefits, right? He's coming to get his shape back, but then he will not be facing that pressure that maybe a Hearts of Folk or a Kumasi Asante Kotoko would give him. Apart from that, Brooklyn Chelsea has proven that they are going to be competitive this season, so he, it's a win-win for him. Yes, and they're um, interested in the teams. They have just a few days to prepare before the weekend. So we'll be taking a look at uh, match day five on your screens and how the teams are going to be playing. And Ashanti Gold will be playing against Brooklyn Chelsea. I want to see that game. Exactly. That will be a cracker. And um, I hope that there will be much of the following. And um, at the end, some positive news should come out of it. And um, just um, Liberty and also um, Accra Hearts of Oak should, should be fun at the Carl Randolph Park. Exactly. And these are one of the games that you expect fans to throng the Carl Randolph Park for because Accra Hearts of Oak seem to be rediscovering their form through um, what happened even today and the last time when they beat the Ebusunia Dwarfs by two goals to one. Liberty also are no pushovers. They went away to Dwarfs to get a win. So it's going to be a very dicey duel. Right, but um, I think which other picks will, will, will you be going for? Well, Kumasi Asante Kotokos, look, uh, it looks a bit dicey for them because they will be playing behind closed doors. We don't know how that will um, turn out for them. But then Elmina Sharks, who seem to have had a resurgence, will be going to, uh, will be facing great Olympics. And let's see whether Olympics can come up with their first win. But then finally, one that we all want to see, probably Adriana Stars versus Legon Cities. Many people um, are very interested in Legon Cities at home. Let's see what they can do when they travel away to the Doma Lads. Right, so we'll be taking a few of your comments that are um, coming in. And um, some are saying that um, I'm very happy um, Hats um, play very well and they play very well in Sogakope and um, as he said and he's hoping for more and this one is also saying the Hats of Work will surely bounce back. I am Kofi Yesu inside Nunga. Thank you very much Kofi for watching GPL Express and finally and um, Emmanuel Nete he says was excellent against um, Wafa and um, GPL must watch out with the combination of Emmanuel Nete, Frederick Anta and Awu to Kote in Hearts midfield. Um, they are beast, you said. All right, so thank you very much for sending your comments in. Cole, thank you very much for coming to the studio. Um, it's been a delight coming your way um, in the last um, hour. GPL Express is on every Wednesday, and we are your best bet for a comprehensive look at the Ghana Premier League. Uh, my name is Juliet Bewa, and I had... Um,
with me in the studio. That is called um, Saki. Good night and keep bringing back the lab for the Ghana Premier League.